following the suspension of the 14-year-old student who accidentally dropped the Quran in school, the authorities, the school and the Islamic community leaders were criticized, rightly so. But the Labour Party continued to support the Islamic snowflakes. The real nasty party is now the Labour Party. Absolutely shameless behaviour from uh, some of the, uh, the senior figures in the party, especially the Labour MPs in Yorkshire. Now, you all know the story now by now about uh, in Yorkshire, one of the schools that had a 14-year-old student uh, who was uh, autistic and with his friends and, and uh, as some sort of weird joke, uh, they brought the Quran into school and with no malicious intent, they accidentally dropped it and it was like, you can see the picture, that's all that happened to it. Anyway, this created this uproar and chaos and uh, he was suspended from school and uh, they even got his mother from Yorkshire to go to a community meeting with the, the local councillors, with the religious Islamic leaders and the police and they forced her to cover her hair, to wear a hijab and to apologise on behalf of her son. This was a very, very embarrassing moment for the country. It's, it's something that's never happened. These sort of things wasn't a thing. But clearly, we now have Islamic blasphemy laws and Sharia in this country. And this was absolutely disgusting, up to a point where the normal people in the country all had a bit of an outrage situation. They said, well, this is a bit weird. There's one thing to, in, in regards to respect. But this is this. There was no malicious intent. Even the police and the the school confirmed it. Well, this happened. Anyway, since then, everybody comes to their senses, saying, "Well, yes, let's pro probably not take it to the next level." Uh, they, they they were a bit snowflakey. People had overreactions, especially the the so-called uh, religious community leaders. But since then, you've had a number of Labour politicians, including Simon Lightwood who is a, a, a local Labour MP for Wakefield in, in Yorkshire, who's not actually from the same constituency, but is in the same uh, area. He decided to um, do a bit of a press release uh, or a statement. Uh, let's go to what he actually said, um, <clears throat> because Simon said, whilst the incident uh, at this school was not in my constituency, so why are you even bothering talking about it anyway? <laughs> I have been in close contact with my colleague, uh, John Trickett MP, uh, who's also Labour, local councillors and members of the wider community in Wakefield. He's talking about the Islamic leaders. I understand that the school acted quickly to investigate the incident involving a small group of children. So, so far, okay. So far, he hasn't said anything too crazy. But the rest of the statement says, I condemn any subsequent threats of violence, online hostilities, or hate speech from anyone against the Islamic leaders, basically. Sadly, there will always be those who will seek to inflame and spread mistruth in order to sow division and animosity within our communities. They will not succeed. Are you absolutely kidding me? Anyway, he says they will not succeed because here in Wakefield, people work together to tackle problems celebrating our diversity and living together with tolerance, respect and mutual understanding. I really, really try my best to not lose my temper over this, but this is absolutely disgusting statement. Firstly, it's a lie that when you say, well, we all always are united, work together to tackle these issues and promote tolerance. Is that tolerance to force a mother to cover her hair, to go sit there with all the others and basically force her to apologize. Tolerance should come from the Islamic leaders in Yorkshire. That's one. Tolerance means that you shouldn't bring your Sharia uh, blasphemy laws in this country. Secondly, why are you focusing on people who are showing a reaction to the ones who had the original reaction? The community leaders, the, the religious leaders who forced the police and the local councillors and the school to act quickly, go after them. They were the ones who were spreading mistruth and hatred and division. They did it. And now you, you're angry at the general population who are simply trying to defend an innocent 14-year-old autistic student who didn't have any malicious intent behind what he did. 
and his mother, who was basically so scared that she was forced to do that, sit there and apologize. That's what people have been doing. People have been criticizing the way the communities work in this country these days. And you, a Labour politician, are taking a side of the snowflakes. This is a toxic relationship between uh, Islamists and uh, socialism. Because they, 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 they both, both sides go with victimhood mentality. And everybody in there, the whole world is against them. So you have to bring down the system and start from scratch and rebuild to do a great reset, I guess. But whatever. It's absolutely nonsensical what's going on. I really try not to lose my temper. But when I see these statements, it makes you wonder what could happen if the Labour, gov Labour Party gets into government. Um, while we are so sick and tired of the Tories, it's a good reminder what could happen with Labour in charge <clears throat> and these power, these people like Simon Lightfoot. Anyway, let's take a quick break. I need to calm down. <laughs> I had a meltdown him myself. Uh, we're going to come back in uh, half an hour. We're going to talk to you guys more about uh, the lockdown files. Amaya Tusi and we are the media. <laughs> 